What's up guys, today we're gonna to be ripping on this Mesa Rectifier Badlander. This is the 50 watt version. And I have my friends at Zounds to thank for sending me this to try out for a little while to see what I think and give my honest thoughts on it. Take it on stage and then tell you guys what I think. All right, so this has two identical channels on it. It has clean, crunch, and crush mode. It also has your channel select switch over here. It has a 50 or 20 watt switch here. And it has a Variac setting, so you can do the whole like bold or spongy thing uh, that the Rectos have pretty much always had. And the Variac mode drops the plate voltage down to around 90 volts, kind of like what you know, Eddie Van Halen used to do. So, All right, so the signal chain is the Tokai LS150 with the Sheptone Brian Conahek PAFs. It's going into the Golden Boy, into the Amp, and then into the Splon 412 with an SM57 and a 421 on a Scumbag H75. So. This is what crush mode sounds like with a pretty hefty amount of gain on tap. This is the blue boost, uh, not the drive boost. This is just sort of the clean boost. <laughs> drive mode on the Tube Screamer setting. crunch mode. Everything's exactly the same. <laughs> softer attack, less gain, a little bit more of a, uh, a richness in the lower mids, um, and a little bit of the bite taken out of the top end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the treble all the way up, maybe bump the presence, and let's see what it does. <laughs> Thank you. 
game back a little bit, see how it cleans up. I'm about halfway there. <laughs> up just a little bit here. So the variac mode did shave a little bit more off the top end, so I'm going to bump the presence up a little bit. just a little bit and we'll see what that sounds like and then we'll throw the boost back in here and see what uh what it sounds like when it's hit a little bit harder up front <laughs> with the blue boost on. is set to the tube screamer mode.
All right, let's check out the clean channel here. I don't have a really pristine clean dialed in. I rarely ever use anything like that on stage. I think having a little bit of grit to the clean channel uh, usually helps fill it out and give it a little bit more of a punch on stage, especially on stage, is when I found that uh, having a little touch of gain in there uh, can really help have it not get lost on stage. Um, so this is how I have it dialed in. Tell you what, let's flip back over to the bold setting. Hear how that changes it. It's it's less of a difference on the clean channel than it was on the on the high gain channels in terms of EQing changes or the feel of it. The feel didn't change a whole lot on the clean channel. <laughs> A little bit brighter when it's set to the bold setting. It didn't drop in volume as much either as the uh, the lead channel did. Bump the gain up a little bit. it pu uh, pushed up quite that high right about there that was some really good breakup right there <laughs> There, let's get a uh, let's get it really clean. See what it does. It's not doing the whole really really clean thing. Mm -hmm. 
Because you lose all of your output when you drop the gain below 11 o'clock. I mean, even if I crank the master. It's still got some hair on it. Maybe that was, I guess, the design intention with them going to the EL34 platform and kind of pushing the narrative of this being more geared towards the British amp sound uh, fans. And as the owner of lots of British amps that have come and gone and still remain in my studio, I can attest to none of them having a clean, clean channel. So a little bit of a little bit of hair on those clean notes that it, it tracks. So and bump the reverb down a little bit. So now it's on the big Del Verb reverb. Chess chorus. So how did this thing do on stage? Well, to be honest, it sounded really good on stage, but it wasn't really the voice that I'm used to on stage, if that makes any sense. I'm used to a purely, really aggressive upper mid-range bark from a Marshall amp. And I went on stage thinking that this was going to be similar to that in voicing because of kind of how they marketed this thing. Uh, I literally took it on stage the day that it showed up. I had maybe 20 minutes to plug it in and sort of fiddle around with it, get some kind of starting sounds going on it. Uh, and then I was off to the show. And I ran it through the Port City cabinet and I also had the two note torpedo Captor X in between that I was feeding a DI signal using the Big Harry Guitars Alien Black cabinet model. Uh, in there and it punched through the mix really well. It had a lot of great clarity on stage and it sat in the mix really well in the PA. So no complaints there. But the whole time I was constantly thinking it needs more gain, but when I hit the strings, I hear gain, but it felt like I just needed more. But after the show, 
and after I started really getting to dig into this thing, it kind of dawned on me that the amp has the gain. It has a lot of gain. I don't think anybody's really questioning that. It's the saturation that's missing from the gain. And I know that sometimes it can be hard to explain the difference between gain and saturation. Um, the Nitro is another great example of an amp with a lot of gain, but not a whole lot of saturation. Now it does have an Overdrive 2 mode that kind of fills out that saturation a little bit more, but with this, it doesn't have an overdrive too. In crush mode with the gain all the way up, it's a lot of gain and it can do the whole rock and metal thing really well, but there's a certain dryness to the sound that is inescapable no matter how you EQ the amp. And I think that that's what was missing for me on stage. And I think it's probably the reason why a lot of guys are adding extra products to this amp to get it to work for them. Uh, there's several videos of guys using the Mr. Scary uh, add-on mod and, you know, again, lots of guys saying, oh, well, this amp really needs a boost to sound right. And I don't really disagree with that. I think that on stage, I had the gain in the crunch mode and I had it pulled back pretty, pretty much um, to right around, the, right around halfway or so. And then I would have an always on very, very low uh, gain hitting uh, the amp in front with the uh, with the Golden Boy, they just stayed on the whole show, and what that did was it gave me the saturation that I wanted, but I didn't have too much gain because I was backing it off here, and I also didn't have much from the pedal. So the gain structure was right, and the saturation was uh, was better because the pedal was adding that extra saturation. Where I didn't really dig this amp though is when you roll back the, the, uh, the volume knob to try to clean up, it really didn't clean up the way that I thought it would and the way that I was expecting it to. Um, it just sort of lost the fullness and the body of the sound and none of my other amps do that. It, it's, this is the only amp that I've experienced that with and I think it's just the nature of that really dry, uh, that dry structure to the, to the gain that it has. Um, so, so yeah, it was a bit of a mixed bag. It's not a bad sounding amp by any means. I think it sounds really good, but the gain structure is very weird. And I don't like the idea of having to have a boost pedal always on in front of it to get it to sound right. Um, so maybe that's the appeal of the Mr. Scary thing that goes into a tube socket and adds an extra layer of preamp gain, uh, to the sound. So I really can't fault Mesa for that. That's how they voiced it. And I think it achieves what they set out to do, but it was, just wasn't the sound that I was expecting or the gain structure that I was expecting and that I'm accustomed to. So it's just a very long-winded way to say that I don't think it sounds bad, but I don't think it sounds right for me. Now, the other cool thing that this thing has going for it is that you can run this without a cabinet. It's got an internal load box and it has a built-in IR selector. So you can have different IRs for each, uh, each channel. And I think that having your own separate IR for different channels is pretty cool. And you can plug a USB cable in and literally just drag and drop your favorite IR into this and it works, it just, it just works. And I've tried it, I've got I tried uh, the ML, two of the ML Sound Labs IRs in here. They sound great. I think they sound a little bit better than what Mesa provide with the, uh, the stock IRs. Um, the only thing that I'm a little bit miffed on is that they don't give you a way to not use an IR. If I wanted to use the balanced XLR output and I want no impulse response, I just want a, just a straight up sound with any, without any kind of processing, that I can then send to my own IR loader, like you know the Ox Stomp or something like that. They don't let you do that. I tried just deleting an IR out of one of the folders for one of the selections, and it just mutes the sound. You don't get any sound out. So I kind of wish that you could do that, but uh, I was not able to get just a dry, uncabinet emulated sound out of the amp. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a really cool amp. It's a great rock amp. For metal, eh, you probably do need something in front of it or that Mr. Scary thing. 
Uh, I think that there's enough guys on YouTube showing what it can do and how it can improve the sound and give you more of that gain, more of that low end, which I don't think it's lacking in the low end. I think it's got plenty of low end grunt and punch. Um, but giving you more saturation, yeah, I can definitely see where the metal player would want something a little bit more than what the amp on its own can deliver. So, yeah, uh, it was a cool amp. I'm glad I got it uh, to, uh, to try it out, and I'm glad I got to take it on stage because on stage, very, very different experience than in the studio. I think I can get it to sound great in the studio, but I really had to work at it on stage to get it to sit right, just right in the mix. And again, that's why I like being able to have the opportunity to play these in the studio and on stage because amps can react so much differently and sound so much differently uh, in the two different environments. Anyways, if this is an amp that you guys want to check out, I'll have an affiliate link in the video description as well as affiliate links to all the rest of the gear that I'm using in this video to make to make these sounds happen. And uh, yeah. We got one more piece of gear that I'm gonna switch over to, get another video going, and uh, we'll see what that's like. So anyways, thanks for hanging out with me, thanks for checking this out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.